Welcome back guys, it is day 12 on the Camino Frances with the help of a Google Earth Pro supplemental material to the vlog series that I did about three years ago an adventure that completely changed my life today is gonna be a good one because the terrain is changing we have left the wine region behind we just entered Castilla y Leon we're in the province of uh, Burgo and today we're gonna climb over Montes de Oca about a thousand a hundred meters of uh, elevation and after this point we're not gonna see anything else until we get to Astorga near the border with Galicia up ahead is La Meseta and we're gaining ground we're making some progress so before we go into today's stage let's go over the Camino de Santiago as a whole I know that by now you guys probably know it by heart let's go over it one more time the Camino de Santiago stretches all the way from St. John Pierre de Port to Santiago de Compostela covering about 800 kilometers but you can go an extra 100 kilometers to the end of the world or to Muxia most people do either one or both I recommend you do both Here's today's uh, stage with the help of uh, the elevation profile. We're covering 27.6 kilometers from Belorado to El Alquimista de Ajes. We're going to be climbing steadily all the way up to 1,100 meters. We're going to take a small dip into a river and then go up once again. And then finally, from that point on, it's just straight down all the way to El Alquimista de Ajes. It was an extremely cold morning today. It was minus one degree Celsius, about 29 Fahrenheit. And I was in pain, man. My leg was killing me. I was relying on the wooden stick that I had found the day before. And I just headed outside the albergue after getting a cool time lapse. I did not do as many time lapses on this trip as I wanted to because I was constantly on the go. I did not want to stop and wait for five minutes to just do a time lapse. But it's something that I had to do because I love the way uh, they come out. So I was out the door at 7.45 in the morning. I did not want to leave at 6.30 as I had done in days past because it was just the coldest point in the morning. So in this case, I decided to just start to leave around 8 o'clock. I could not find a place to have breakfast and that is because I cut here through the plaza instead of following the yellow arrows following the Camino and I rejoined it here on the outskirts of town. 8 o'clock saw a couple of businesses the doors were shuttered so I continue on walking as I made it to uh, the outskirts of town here by Puente del El Canto over the Tiron River you have a rest area on this spot you have an information deck you get to go over the river on the wooden uh, bridge right next to it is the modern one and here once again I got to see the plants that were frozen and were beginning to thaw 8 15 in the morning walking trailing the road for a little bit going by a roundabout as i made my way to uh, the next town and that is the town of Tos Santos. i got there at 9 a.m so i have been walking for an hour and 15 minutes and i was desperately looking for a place to have breakfast luckily for me i saw a bunch of arrows pointing towards a bar that was in that direction so i left the camino and my lips were just numb from how cold it actually was I saw a couple of water fountains and then I made it to Iglesia Parroquial de San Esteban which is right across the main uh, road. This uh, church was uh, restored thanks in part to the pilgrims and the donations that are collected at Ermita de la Virgen de la Peña. And this is one of the coolest ermitas that I've seen because it's just right up against the side of the wall of the mountain very little is known about it there are a few scattered accounts throughout history but much of it remains in mystery found the place to have breakfast it was um, a burger here and I, it was just packed full of people and i had one of the most expensive uh, breakfasts of the entire camino but i had eggs ham orange juice toast i mean you name it it, it just hit the spot because I was extremely hungry at this point and the Camino also you're constantly just eating toast or croissants you don't get to come across eggs that often so when you see them go for them once I left I saw the ermita wanted to get a couple of shots so I started walking in that direction if you want to go there you just have to climb a little bit not too much but I happened to have a drone so that's what I did I took off from this spot to get some shots of uh, the ermita and then since i didn't know where the camino was i used it as a scouting tool and i saw a bunch of pilgrims 
on the Camino, not far from me, walking uh, towards the next town. And if I didn't have the drone or the GPS tracks, I would have had to backtrack to the church. So instead, I saw that all I had to do was just cut across here. And soon I was out into the countryside once again and at 10 a.m. in the morning with the bell tower in the distance. I had like the walking stick hanging back here. So I felt like a bandit. And just as I was getting those shots, for the first time, I ran out of memory. The first memory from St. John Pied de Port lasted all the way up to here. When I did the Camino Frances, I did not take a laptop or a hard drive. I remember that I took about 500 gigs worth of uh, micro SD cards for both the drone and my camera. On later Caminos, on the Via Francigena, I took my laptop, the one that I used to edit all these vlogs, and I had an external hard drive, which I was editing the daily videos from the Camino. When I did the Camino, Portuguese, El Norte, and Inglés, what I did was just buy a hard drive in San Sebastián where you can insert an SD card and it will download all the footage to it. So that way I didn't have to worry about uh, memory storage. So I was sitting here at a bench in front of the church. This is where I changed the SD card. There's a water fountain here where the water is not treated once again, but right next to it, there's another one in this small park. We are at the 25% of the day for today, and here I almost made a wrong turn. I started heading in this direction. Good thing is that there is an albergue at the end of this street, so when I would have gotten there, I probably would have seen the yellow arrows pointing back to the Camino. So I left another small town, and I was back into uh, the countryside. There are so many along the way and so close together, as you can see, that you only walk for an hour, half an hour tops between one and the other. As I was uh, walking now, I saw a group of cyclists that passed me by and I started realizing that you would see the cyclists like around the 10 in the morning point. That's when all of them will pass you by and then you will not get to see them again for the, the rest of the day. The next town after you cross the main road is Espinosa del Camino. I got there at 1042 in the morning and this town has a uh, Pretty cool looking water fountain here and also one of the most colorful albergues that I've seen on the Camino, at least the facade was just crazy how much uh, effort they had put into it and it showed. From there I left the town and here we're heading back out once again, slowly climbing <laughs> until I picked up a flower over here. I could see the ruins of Ermita de San Felipe. It was 11, 12 in the morning. And here, as I made it to uh, the main road, I saw one of those uh, stop signs where they write things on them. And in this case, it was do not stop uh, walking. Trail the road for a little bit until you get here to uh, this uh, wooden bridge over the Rio Oca. I love the small wooden bridge with a little stream and you have the highway next to you with the cars passing by. You can follow the river or the road to a lake and they have an actual dam there. So if you're feeling adventurous and you want to head in that direction, you pass by Ermita de Nuestra Señora de Oca. Go down, you can see the huge dam there and either backtrack to Montes de Oca or you can cut across here and uh, rejoin the Camino where the mass grave uh, monument is at. But we're going to get to that in a little bit. But no, not for me. I decided to go to the town, a town where you can resupply. They have a few bars and places uh, to uh, get ready for what's coming. And what's coming is today's uh, climb. They have a municipal albergue and also Iglesia de Santiago Apostol. This is where I stopped. I flew my drone to get a couple of shots. I got some uh, water. I added sunscreen once again to my face because it was starting to warm up. And while I was doing all of this, I forgot my walking stick by the church. So I guess somebody else needed it more than me. I started climbing, climbing, and I, before leaving the town, right next to uh, this cemetery, I saw the sign for the GR 82 to Ibea, 26 kilometers. So the GR route goes through uh, all, all over Europe. And this one on the Camino del Norte, I will follow the GR 9 a lot because it was the one that was trailing the coast all the time and he had the the best views 11:55 got the last shots of um, Villafranca Monte de Oca below me and I was walking making my way up saw a bunch of uh, critters on the path I also did another attempt at the rock stacking over 
a Camino a Stone Sign. There's a viewpoint over here, a rest stop. As you go up, you make it to the halfway of the day for today. Made it to uh, the first highest point of the day. Why the first? Because up here we have a little dip in the road. We go to another uh, small stream and then we climb up once again to about the same altitude uh, where we were. But what's here, and I got there at 12.50, is a mass grave from uh, the Franco era, from the Civil War here in Spain. And about 300 political prisoners were executed and buried in shallow graves on this spot. So you have a rest area. The mass grave is right here behind it. I did not know about it, so I just saw the monument. Got some uh, shots of uh, the windmill in the distance, some drone shots. And then I continue on. I started descending all the way down here to the Arroyo Peroja, another wooden bridge here, 103 in the afternoon. And here you can see the climb once again that you have to do uh, to uh, this spot where I try my luck once again at the rock stacking. And not far from here is where I saw the Buen Camino sign on the ground made out of uh, rocks. You can see here, if we zoom in and go into the drone footage, you can see it says Buen Camino. Continue on walking by this, uh, by the woods. Saw another group of cyclists that passed me by and I saw on the ground one of them, I guess, dropped their uh, water bottle. It was almost two in the afternoon and I bumped into the group of Spaniards, Koreans, Americans that I met at the Aberget last night. And we walked together to one of uh, the highlights of the day and completely catches you by surprise. I stopped here. I got a stamp. One of the pilgrims, her feet were not doing great and we managed to uh, help her out a little bit and alleviate uh, the pain. Those of us that didn't have any blisters decided to dance a little bit of salsa. The lady here started playing on her radio, so we played some salsa. The pilgrims that were passing by, we were all playing and having a great time. This was the time when Despacito came out, so it was all over the place. I also got an amazing uh, drone with the group, and I had the drone go up, get a bird's eye view of the area. It was the 75% of the way already. And at 3.20 in the afternoon, I made it to El Monasterio de San Juan de Ortegas. San Juan de Ortegas uh, was one of uh, Santo Domingo's disciples, and he built this uh, monastery. The monastery is famous uh, for uh, the miracle of lights that occurs in the spring and uh, autumn equinoxes. The light coming from the window lines up and illuminates the image of Annunciation where you can see uh, the Archangel Gabriel and the Virgin uh, Mary. You can also see the mausoleum of St. John and the canopy uh, that surrounds it. Some of the guidebooks I recommend that you end today's stage here and by all means you could do so because it's a cool place. You have an burger here and there's also a place where you can get uh, something to eat. I decided to continue on walking because I was following my guidebook and I'm also glad that I did because tomorrow is going to be the worst day for me on the Camino de Santiago, but we're going to go over that tomorrow. I left the group behind. They decided to stay and eat something there. I was following another GR82 sign. There's a wooden cross here. I had to take out my rain jacket because it looked like it was going to rain and I did not want it to catch me off guard. I put away my camera and the drone so I did not film anything from here until I got to uh, the town, which was not far away anyways. I did use my phone to get a couple of shots when I got here overlooking at the town below. There were a few cows that were loose. There was also uh, like spirals made out of a stone on the ground. So it was a cool place to stop here. The Spaniards caught up with me. I was limping, man. So I was walking up uh, very slow. I got to town not uh, long after that. El Alquimista de Arges. I know they're charming a uh, little village. I stay at the municipal albergue where I checked in, you know, fell back into uh, my routine, took a shower, washed my clothes. I tried my luck at the dryer, but since it didn't dry completely, I hang them outside in the patio. I also had a late lunch here because I did not get to eat anything today. And also I got my first massage on the entire Camino. They have one of those machines where you sit down. I think it costs like two euros and it just shakes your legs. But in this case, it just hit the spot. 
Started walking here in the main plaza, took out my drone. I had to charge all the batteries before I could fly again. It was 6, 12 in the afternoon. There were, I remember kids here playing in this, uh, they were playing soccer in this field. And I got some shots of Iglesia de Santa Eulalia. So storks up there once again. And I also got the establishing shots of, uh, of the town. So like around 7 or 8 o'clock, I went back to the albergue. It started raining, so my clothes got wet, so I had to get them and then put them in the machine once again and actually get them to dry this time around. I think I pulled in with another pilgrim, so I didn't have to spend as much. Went for the menu del dia, del peregrino, which was a lot of food, salads, you know, chicken, red wine. I was having a dinner with my friends. We were having yellow shots. I ended up just dancing salsa with one of the Spaniards, and it was just an amazing afternoon with a great company. So that was the end of day 12. Tomorrow is going to be a crazy, crazy day, man. It's going to be the worst day for me on the entire Camino, and that is only because of the weather. It rained from beginning to end. It was cold. The only thing that was missing was uh, <laughs> snow. When I got to Burgos, I was feeling it, man. I remember checking in at the municipal albergue and my hands were numb, shaking. I could barely hold on to uh, the passport and I was already showing signs of hypothermia. I had like red spots here in the torso. So when I took the shower, you know, I felt it. But we'll go into that uh, tomorrow. See you guys then.